Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are going to get started in a few minutes. Um, we'll give it like a minute or two for any uh, last minute people to be joining us. Um, if you have not used our uh, Teams application before, please feel free to um, check out the chat, the Q&A over on the side. Anything that's posted in the chat, we will be moderating um, so it doesn't go live right away. Once we answer a question, we will publish it for you. Uh, so you can see what other people are asking and um, yeah so we'll just give it another minute or so for people to join our webinar about April 1st enrollment. see our counts are still going up so give it another minute or so All right, it looks like we might be holding steady right now. A few more people joining. So we'll go ahead and get started because we know that you all have a very busy day. So we want to make sure we make the most of your time. Thank you all for joining us. Um, today we're going to talk about April 1st enrollment counts. Thank you all who joined last week. Uh, we apologize the snow day uh, did interfere with our plans for last week, but I'm glad you all, all could join us today instead. Um, so let's get started with April 1. Um, a few house help, uh, housekeeping things. Once again, if you haven't used our platform before, over on the right-hand side, there is a Q&A. Please feel free to post any questions that you have along the way. Um, we'll answer them as we go, and we'll also do some Q&A at the end as well. Um, we also would like to let you all know that this will be recorded. We'll have the recording available as soon as possible. It takes a little bit of time to get it put together and get everything taken care of um, with transcribing and everything, but we'll get it out. And also our slideshow will be available. That might be available a little bit sooner. We might be able to get that out this afternoon. So um, we'll go over where to find those as we go. Um, and thanks for being here. Great. Before we get into April 1, I wanted to also let everybody know about some upcoming things we have going on. April uh, reporting, we have April 1 enrollment, high cost out of district placement is due. That's a special education report. Um, quarterly reports are due on the 15th as well as April 1st report. Um, so making sure that all, those all get updated all together. Uh, we have another webinar at the end of April about homeless data entry. Uh, that will be with Amelia Lyons and myself. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself. I'm Allie Cookson from the DGC and Mike is here with us too. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm here in the background, guys. I'll be answering uh, your questions in the Q&A and helping Allie out. So. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and then in May, we have a couple webinars. We have a little bit of a series going on for end of year reporting. ESEA demographics, um, and then we'll have that report will be open in May. Uh, Maine Schools application also opens in May. Um, and then we'll have an end of year enrollment exit webinar on the 23rd, just kind of going over how to exit students at the end of the school year and the importance of getting that set up for the following year. So feel free to keep an eye out for those. Um, those will be coming out in our newsletter and our um, communications to the newsroom. All right, let's get into April 1. So on our Help Desk website um, listed here, this, once we send this out, all of these um, slides are kind of interactive, so you can click on the links and they'll take you where you need to go. But um, on our Help Desk website, we have data reporting instructions. That's where you're going to find the instructions for today's uh, web from today's webinar um, about April 1st reporting. On that tile, right up at the top, uh, as they go in alphabetical order, you'll find April 1 enrollment report instructions. That will be uh, what we're talking about today. We'll go through everything, but if you want more detail, that's where you can find them there. 
The April 1 enrollment report is um, a statutory requirement in order to determine tuition. Um, so if you'd like to read that, you can link it right here. Uh, we'll send this out so you can have it. Um, it is not part of the EPS funding formula, but these numbers that are um, calculated in April are averaged with the October 1st uh, report and uh, they help us figure out tuition rates. Uh, those are from Paula Gravel. Um, she'll be doing all of those calculations to make sure that everybody gets their funding. Um, in preparation for this report, the most important thing is to make sure that SEUs keep the state level enrollment data in synergy, com um, current and complete. So making sure everything's up to date uh, which is going to be the biggest thing here. All SEUs and private schools with publicly funded students uh, should be ensuring that their enrollments are current. Uh, this includes charter schools and education in unorganized territories. So anybody who's working with um, publicly tuition stu students. Important dates coming up April 1st is when this uh, report will start to uh, uh, come together. I think you'll start seeing things being pulled into the reports. It opens up on the 1st. Uh, it's due on the 15th. Your reporting period is only uh, April 1. So the report will only pull from enrollments that overlap that April 1st date. You'll notice on our calendar here that it is a Saturday. Um, that means that it, uh, a weekend day, you might have a student who exits on Friday and they're going to another district. If they go to that other district and they don't enroll them, they may not get the count. So you'll have to communicate with each other to make sure that whoever should be getting that tuition count or that enrollment count is um, getting that count and that that student is enrolled on the first. So it will just take some communication between districts. Right, it'll it'll be very similar to how October 1st was handled this year, where I believe that was also a Saturday. So, you know, we were asking you guys to make sure you were enrolling your kids for October 1st. We know there's no school on October 1st, but it's to get the reporting done. So same idea. Yep. So just making sure that that enrollment overlaps that Saturday day. In NEO is where this report will be housed. Um, these are just the step-by-step -step directions about where to go in NEO. Um, if you don't have NEO access to student data, that is something that your superintendent will need to request for you by submitting a NEO access request form. This is an online document. Um, staff who require NEO accounts and access must be entered into NEO, uh, into NEO staff prior to submitting an access request. So um, I assume most people probably have their uh, access already kind of figured out, but if you don't and you have some questions about it, uh, there's some information here about how to get that set up so that you can get what you need um, and your superintendent will have to do it and you'll have to be in staff. All right, accessing the report in NEO. When you log into NEO, here's your screen that you usually would see. We're gonna click on that student data section. Under student data, the reports will be found under student reports. And then alphabetical order, they're right at the top. So um, uh, of the enrollment section, April enrollment certification, and April details. Your certification report is going to be a combination of like all of your numbers. It's just going to have numbers on there. It's not going to really tell you anything about who was involved or anything like that. So if you have questions about where any of those numbers are coming from, what you would want to, uh, to use instead of the certification report would be your details report. Details report is going to get into each student, what they're counting towards in each of those numbers that you're seeing on that certification report. Your certification report looks something like this. It's going to give you an attending enroll, uh, enrollment count for your pre-K through 8 students, attending enrollment count 9 through 12, attending uh, enrollment for pre-K through 12, and then it's going to give you those tuition rates for each one. Those numbers don't always match up with each other for your attending and your tuition. Um, you may have some students who are attending outside of your district. Um, which would not count as an enrollment for your district necessarily. 
Um, so this is just your summary for the for your district. Uh, just verify that these counts look correct. Anything that looks incorrect on this report, uh, you can go into the details report to make sure that um, each student individually is represented. Um, at the bottom of this report is where your superintendent would certify to ensure that everything is accurate. Um, so once data specialist, anybody who's involved with this count uh, takes a look at it, uh, that's where uh, your superintendent would need to certify to say that everything's accurate and that we can use this data uh, to accurately represent your district. This is your details report. And um, we have that link is right there at the top as well um, on this prior screen. Your details report can be linked right there to see what these counts are looking like. Each student will be individually um, represented. You can count each. You can see about a student who's enrolled. Um, you can search for a specific student if you want to verify that a new enrollment is there. Um, you can search for that student's ID number, their name. Um, any identifier that will pull that specific student. Um, you can also export this to Excel if you would prefer to look at it um, and sort the data a little bit more um, with a little bit more uh, chances to kind of put things together and group things. You can do that a little bit better in Excel sometimes, so you can export this out to Excel. Um, you can also filter and column sort your uh, each column by grade level so you can see how many students you have counted in each grade. Um, each of the columns can be sorted that way. Um, they'll go in alphabetical order and then um, reverse alphabetical order for any any button that you're pushing there. Um, the last thing that I wanted to point out here was your tuition count indicator. That's going to be what's pulling those numbers into the certification report. Uh, so if a student has a one indicated at their attending, that would be a student that's counting towards your tuition. A student that's listed with a zero, that may be a student that has a primary enrollment with your district, but then they are attending elsewhere. Um, so for example, this student is attending a regional program. Um, they're not going to count as an enrolled student with uh, Rainbows and Unicorns district. They'll be an attending count for um, the Wonderland Regional Program. So they don't necessarily count um, towards tuition. A few notes on this report. Um, all data in Synergy should be updated. Um, so once information is put into Synergy, you want to give it about an hour, hour and a half-ish um, to update uh, and be reflected in the NEO reports. So it's not something that will happen immediately. Any changes, if you notice something on that um, attending, or sorry, the details report, anything that's specific to a student that needs to be updated will have to happen in Synergy. It will take a little bit of time for that to be reflected in our NEO reports. Um, once again, I want to point out that this report is only looking at students who are enrolled on the date of April 1. That's a Saturday, um, so make sure that you're coordinating with other districts for students who are moving in or out of the district over the weekend uh, to ensure that that student's being picked up and counted for someone's tuition rate. Um, the last thing that we want to mention is PEBT. Uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of update enrollments, make sure mailing addresses and economic status um, are up to date uh, so that students who are eligible for PEBT receive that funding. Um, the PEBT is looking at students who have an economic disadvantage status um, and have X amount of days of um, uh, attendance that are uh, absent, excused absences, uh, for in-person and unexcused absence, sorry, um, and present remote days. Those students are eligible uh, if they have five days in a row that indicate um, while they're on an economic disadvantage, they are eligible for PEBT. So making sure that those enrollments are up to date, um, making sure that at mailing addresses are up to date as well so that those are going out to the right place. 
um, and not necessarily coming to your district uh, so that you can hand them out. We'll, we'll hand them out to, we'll send them out via mail. DHHS will send them out um, if their mailing addresses are accurate. And that is pretty much the April report. Um, for any questions, if something's not updating, um, and you're having an issue with a report, feel free to contact the help desk. Uh, if you are looking for a training opportunity, um, it, maybe you're new to Synergy and NEO and want some ad additional assistance, please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, you can email me or call me or um, however you want to get in contact me with me. I'd be happy to set up any type of training with you or your district or both. So. We have quite a few opportunities open if you want to schedule something. So I think we'll take a look at the Q&A. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you had anything come in that you wanted to address or. Yeah, for um, because some folks may not have the chat up, so um, I'll just read through some of the questions um, I've been fielding as we've been going here, and um, this will kind of give folks some good info and refreshers. Um, so um, the first one we had was as far as updating your student data. Someone was wondering if they should do their uh, Synergy enrollment uploads first or their personal. And for that one, uh, you always want to do your enrollment uploads first. That way you actually pull in the kids that you know you have or you exit the kids that are no longer attending. Because uh, otherwise, if you do your personal first and you haven't actually enrolled the student, then you're just going to get errors that, hey, I can't update the student's uh, date of birth because you don't own them. Um, so always just do start with your enrollments. Make sure you've got your got your kids and then you can start updating uh, the information about them. And that one's pretty straightforward. And then um, we had another question just talking about students that are transferring um, over that weekend. Uh, so like like we mentioned at the beginning, it's going to be just like October was this year. Uh, so if you know that a student's last day with you is going to be Friday, March 31st, then go ahead and you're going to exit your student for Friday because you know that they're not returning. And then the responsibility is going to be on the new school that's picking them up to make sure that they're starting their enrollment for April 1st and not April 3rd that Monday. Uh, once again, it's just to get the uh, get the reporting done. We know they're not actually attending. You're not going to have to put in attendance or anything for Saturday and Sunday, but uh, make sure you're just getting those those few kids that you know happen to transfer over one of our uh, lovely reporting windows. Uh, so just just make sure you pick them up. It's um it's a different story where if you if you have a student and you know that their last day is April 3rd, let's say if if that's like their scheduled last day, then you leave them enrolled until April 3rd and you exit them April 3rd and then the other school picks them up on the 4th. But it's where you know what their last day is. You just want to exit them for that day every time. So um, we had that and then um, some folks were trying to go and uh, pull up their reports right now to have a look at them. But since we since we haven't actually hit April 1st, the reports can't populate yet. So you will want to um, just focus on, you know, getting your um, student enrollments kind of squared away and you know you can you can keep updating Synergy, but you won't be able to actually see the report until we hit, uh, you know, April. And let's see what else we've got. Oh, uh, so we were getting some uh, get a got a question about PEBT. I see you're applying to Ali. I will I'll let you do that one. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I guess you're talking about okay. this one about the economic status form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK, um, so we actually uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of talk about something that we talked about yesterday with the nutrition team and the finance team uh, for anyone who was able to attend that um, webinar. Uh, there was some really good information there about the economic status form. Um, so students who fill out the free and reduced lunch form and are indicated as free or reduced, those students are eligible for uh, PEBT if they have that uh, if they have five days of um, five consecutive days of excused absences 
with a present modality. They're also eligible if they have five consecutive attendance days of uh, remote modality in person, or sorry, remote modality present, sorry. Um, so those are the students who would be eligible for the PEBT for those missed days of school where they were not receiving lunch. Essentially, that's what we're looking at for that eligibility. That's what DHHS wants to see. Uh, so those students would be eligible. And I'll type that out too. Um, but I also wanted to hit on yesterday we in our webinar, we talked about um, the economic status form for any schools who are not able to send out the free and reduced lunch form. Um, there is an alternative form uh, that's on our website. It's under EPS guides. Uh, you're welcome to use that. That can be used with all students. Uh, regardless of your status. So if you're having a hard time getting those free and reduced lunch forms back because of, you know, perspective on free and reduced lunch or anything like that, those forms, those alter alternate economic status forms can be a good alternative uh, to make sure that that data is getting back to you and that you're getting the funding that you need. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Um, I can direct you where you would like to go uh, to be able to find those. Um, and give you a little bit of information about kind of how we are, um, what we're doing to kind of help support that process, uh, because we know that it's been kind of an issue before. So feel free to give me a call about that one. And Mike, I'll let you handle yeah. the synergy question. Yep, sure thing. Yeah, so the um, someone was asking about the, the lovely fatal errors um, <laughs> you've all been seeing this year, and uh, the good news is that, yeah, Synergy's been working on those, trying to get them figured out, and we should have a, the vast majority of fatal errors should be fixed either this week or next week. I am uh, eagerly awaiting um, our contact to send me the patch so I can test it, and then uh, as soon as that passes my muster, um, I will have it in, um, in, in synergy for all of you so it should be just in time for april um and yeah sorry for all of that this year it's been uh, it's been a fun one trying to get that figured out but uh they we, we've got a process to kind of get that resolved so that we can uh, we can do our reporting this year because that would be that would be lovely so um so yeah as of as of the current moment there is still some weird issues with synergy imports um it's not it doesn't affect everybody all the time and what we've noticed is if you upload smaller files, then it will have less tendency to give you the fatal errors and actually you know, give you the proper reports it's supposed to give. So, you know, if, if you just really want to work through it and not wait for the fix, I would suggest just uploading like one school at a time or one grade at a time. You know, de depending on how you've got your local SIS set up, that either sounds really painful or really easy. And so I leave it up to you um, if you want to just wait for the fix on our end, because you shouldn't be expected to need to do that. But it, it is an option right now, and that's pretty much the only way that we know to get anything to really work right now um, without their intervention. So uh, thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> the end is in sight. And I, I'm just answering this last question that we currently have. Um, this webinar or this presentation will be available. Um, it will be available di digitally. You are welcome to print it. Um, it's however you want to look at it, feel free. Um, but hopefully we'll have this out this afternoon so that districts can use it uh, to get everything up to date before the report starts to populate in on April 1. Because that can that can start happening now. Things can start to update. Um, start to put things in, um, make sure everything looks right in synergy so that when that report is open, it will all be ready to go. Yep. And um, once again, this this report's kind of similar in a way to October, you know, where there's no, we're not do dealing with any subsidy counts. We're just kind of dealing with uh, attending counts and uh, their demographic, you know, indicators. So once again, not a bad idea to, uh, you know, look, pull up your April report, maybe pull it into Excel, um, you know, make it into a table and then, you know, you can have, uh, you can start filtering on the different fields and you can, uh, you know, filter your special ed kids and then hand that list off to your special ed director, say, hey, 
this is who we see for you know special ed as, as of April 1. How does this look to you? You know, same thing with your economic disadvantaged kids or your EL students, you know, make get those lists, hand them off to the people that know those students uh, the best and can and can actually tell you, you know, hey, if anybody's missing, because uh, that, that's always your best way to find if uh, if there's any errors, because, you know, who who knows what's happening uh, in between, you know, your SIS and Synergy, sometimes uh, crazy stuff happens. So um, getting people to look at it, always your best bet, make sure the data is good. 100%. All right, I don't see any new questions rolling in. We'll give it a little bit more time. Um, I would also, I just wanted to take a quick moment here also to point out a new feature on our website. Um, we have a new newsletter that has our reports available on it. Um, so, oh, I guess you can't see that. Um, let, me, let me see here. Oh, I'll just tell you about it, I guess. But back on our website, let me go back right here. All right. Um, so, over here on this side tab, um, tab, there's a section there that has our subscription to our newsletter. Um, so, feel free to take a look at that. Um, it's not sending to the screen for some reason, um, but we um, have been posting some new, um, we've been posting some new resources there um, that has upcoming reports to be looking out for and things like that. Um, so you feel free to subscribe. I think it will. Tr we're trying to get it to come out on the first of every month. Um, so that will have some good information on it as well about upcoming webinars, reporting periods, things like that. So feel free to um, feel free to sign up for that if you are interested. And it's right on our help desk screen over on the right hand side under contact help desk. Um, subscribe to newsletters. Yeah, I'll make a, I'll just throw the link as an announcement right here for everybody. So if you have the chat window up, Thank you, you can. Mike the link in there for you guys. Thank you, Mike. That's wonderful. Yep. We'll give it a couple more minutes, maybe. I don't know if we have any more, but um, also wanted to say thank you all for anyone who attended last week and we um, postponed. Uh, we apologize for that confusion. Uh, we really appreciate that you were able to join us today. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you for our upcoming webinars and presentations that are coming up. So, all right, I think, I think we can call it for today. Um, if you have any questions, once again, please feel free to reach out to us at the help desk um, or give me a call. Um, completely up to you, however you prefer. Uh, that information is right here. Once again, um, I'd be happy to set up trainings. Um, any questions that are coming up, please feel free to let me know. Thanks for uh, joining us, everybody. Oh, we got a. Yeah. Oh, nope, that's just a thank you. Okay. That's a thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But um, yeah, no, April's pretty straightforward. And yeah, thanks for uh, taking some uh, time, guys. Uh, luckily, not a lot of changes to this one. So if you've uh, done it before, uh, same same dance as it's always been. So. Yeah. There was a question, Mike. Um, about how we use K through eight districts enter, how K through eight districts enter their next year high school who are going to approved high school in Maine. Okay, is that is that in relation to April? Because it sounds like that might be a maybe like an end of year exit yeah. thing. But um, yeah, you can you can keep. I know we there's a bit of it like a 10 second delay as well for what when you guys yeah. are hearing this. What I'm saying right now, I said it 10 seconds ago. But um, go ahead and give give some more detail if you want, but I'll kind of answer it. Um, so yeah, if you're 
if this is like an end of year exit type of question and they're going to um, another district for high school next year, you're you're welcome. We do have an exit code for um, transferring to a uh, different public school and a different LEA. Um, so you're welcome to use that at the end of the year. Not necessary though, since we have vastly improved our graduation reporting. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to just exit those kids not enrolled eligible to return, that's totally fine with us. And then when that high school picks them up in the fall, um, like there's there's nothing that we have anymore that's looking for that connection between your June exit and the September enter. So it, it's dealer's choice, whatever helps you guys on your end, but uh, it's, there's no hard requirement for us. Um, and yeah, everything should work basically the same. You know, when you use either one of those two exits, it should automatically exit their special ed, economic status, um, all of those other secondary pieces should get exited with the right codes between either one of those two. So no, no difference to us. Yeah, and we will have an end of year exits and um, webinar at the end of May on the 23rd um, that will likely answer most of these questions um, if you would like to attend that as well. Yeah, yep, yeah, they, they kind of elaborated on what they were looking for. So yeah, I'll, I'll oh, reply yeah. to them. Okay, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. All right. I see yeah, ba now. basically the the April the April uh, tuition rates that has nothing to do with the funding that that sending school gets. It has yeah, those are not connected whatsoever. That's all. That's all October. So yeah, don't worry about any of that for April or end of year exiting. Yep. But yeah. I think that was all that we had come in. All right. All right, I think we will wrap it up then. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week.